Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChitchaCheck.com here with another amazing and extremely exciting Tutorial Tuesday. Today we're going over the fact that people have been requesting a lot lately. Well, not necessarily requesting, but they really liked it on our Facebook page. And that effect would be this set of 3D planets. So, let's go ahead and bring up the full screen if it would let me. Is it thinking? Hello? What is going on here? Come on, go full screen for me. Almost there. There we go. All right, awesome. So these are the two 3D planets that we're creating, and we have set them in uh, like a 3D uh, spacey kind of looking scenery with this like aura kind of going around them. And it's pretty cool, needless to say. Um, I don't even know how I came up with this. Like people were posting planets on our Facebook page, and I don't know. I guess it just inspired me to try and make my own. So here we are <laughs> making this uh, 3D uh, space effect tutorial now. <laughs> All right, um, so let's just go ahead and try and get into this tutorial now because I really am short on time. I'm leaving for my, um, uh, what is it called, my bone graft surgery in like a half hour or so. So let's just try and go this pretty quick. And um, so yeah, the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and make our 3D planet itself. So to do that, We'll go ahead and click and drag in a texture of some sort. So for me, I'm using this grunge texture from Video Copilot's Riot Gear DVD. And so what's going to happen with this particular effect is that it's going to be wrapped around a 3D sphere using our um, the 3D options in a CS5 Extended. So if you don't have that, I'm sorry, but this tutorial is just not for you. But if you do have it and these options are grayed out and such, um, just double check that um, in your preferences under performance that you have this enable OpenGL drawing turned on and also double check in uh, and down here in the 3D options that you have OpenGL enabled there as well. So if you can't turn those on your graphics card probably can't handle this. So um, if you really do want to make this effect then you might have to find a little bit of a workaround on your own. Okay, so when it comes to wrapping this around a 3D sphere, um, something that's going to end up happening, um, I'll just demonstrate real quick, is that, uh, let's turn this off, go down here to our actual 3D object. Um, if I were to spin this around like so, you'll notice that this thing's got kind of like its own butt crack kind of a thing going on. And that's something that we don't really want. So. Um, you can either just not see that side of the planet, or you can go ahead and turn it into its own, um, uh, what's it called, uh, tileable texture. And it's actually pretty simple, so let's go over that real fast. Um, we'll grab our rectangular marquee tool, and then just kind of, uh, let's unlock this and call this uh, planets real fast. And then just make a uh, square selection around this uh, right hand uh, just portion of the texture kind of um, it's like a fourth of it but maybe a little less I can't really tell for sure and we'll just uh, duplicate that into its own layer or cut it into its own layer I should say by hitting control shift J or command shift J if you're on a Mac and then with that piece that we cut out we'll go ahead and move it to the left while holding shift until it snaps to that left hand area over there and then we'll make a layer mask on top of that and then we'll grab our gradient tool with the, the letter G and then make sure we're set to a linear gradient and make sure it's set to black to white or black to transparent either one works and then if we zoom in to 100% I'll move over here and then put your cursor um, just to the left of that right hand um, edge of the um, I don't know that piece that we cut out and then click and drag to the left while holding shift and then stop just before the the edge right there so if you can kind of see where my cursor is trying to help you out with that little um, circle thing and just let go to uh, help mask that off and blend it and that's actually blended really well so go to your layer one over here and merge it down with control E or command E if you're on a Mac and so you'll notice that if we were to grab our move tool and then make a duplicate of this and move it off to the right and line it up you'll see that it actually matches up perfectly you don't see any creases at all and that's kind of the, the general idea behind this, is to um, have an, uh, an ending point here 
then have that uh, the next uh, set of pixels start off on the left here. That's kind of how you create scalable t uh, uh, scalable textures. All right. So uh, go to the plant layer and control click or command click the thumbnail for that to load it up as a selection. And then go to image crop so we can crop that up and you can deselect that if you choose. Doesn't really matter. And then we'll go to 3D uh, new shape from layer sphere. And then after a little bit, that will automatically turn it into its own little 3D planet. And so you can go over here and use the 3D object rotate tool to kind of uh, click and drag that off to the side and just kind of get a better look at what you want. So just kind of position that uh, in a spot that you think looks good. So I'll probably just uh, rotate this a little bit. Um, let's grab that. Maybe look like it's kind of um, tilting upwards a little bit or something like that. All right, so once you've got this in a position that you think looks pretty good, um, we'll just uh, go ahead and start manipulating how it looks to make it look a little bit better. So if you go over here, you'll see this little uh, eye icon and the word planet. Double click that word planet, and that will open up that texture that we used for our 3D object. So what we'll do is just make this a little bit darker to make it look a little more dreary looking. So add a new levels adjustment layer on top. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in that black slider to that begin uh, little uh, mound, I guess. I don't really know. And we'll go ahead and brighten this up a little bit and then move the midtones off to the right as well. And so we're just getting that dark and dreary kind of look. And uh, that's actually looking pretty good, so I'll just leave that just right there. Looking pretty good. And I've said that like six times. I should stop that. <laughs> All right, so if you zoom in, you'll notice that this texture has a bunch of white spots and such on it. And to be completely honest, that's actually kind of good in our case because I want to make hot spots. And the way we're going to make those hot spots is to go back to our adjustments and we're going to add a threshold adjustment layer. And I'm going to move this all the way to the right to single out those white spots. If you're using a different texture, then you'll just kind of play with that until you get something that you like or just kind of um, just ignore the whole hot spot idea in general. So when you've got all those singled out, go to your channels, control click or command click the uh, RGB thumbnail to load that up as a selection. Then we'll click and drag that threshold down to the uh, trash can to delete it. And we'll make a new layer. And we'll fill that in with white by hitting control backspace or command delete if you're on a Mac to fill that in with white since we got white as our background color over there. And then we'll deselect that with control D. And then we'll go to effects, outer glow. And we'll set this to color dodge and then change the color to maybe kind of a goldish kind of a color. And then mess with the size and the spread so we get something that looks pretty good. So that's actually pretty good looking just right there. We've got, let's see, uh, let's see if I can see this a little bit better. Um, well, my eyes are bugging out. <laughs> All right, so we got 10% on the spread, if I can see that right, and 81 on the pixels. Man, my contacts are just not cooperating with me today. <laughs> and we'll just uh, hit OK on that to call it good because this is looking pretty nice. And so we'll save this with our, you know, the usual shortcut of Control S or Command S if you're on a Mac. And after it's done saving, mine's going to take a little while because I'm recording this. If you go back to the, uh, the 3D planet, you'll see that we've actually got an, uh, the updates already on here. So. That's actually done by itself with the just the the whole texture of the planet. So we'll go ahead and make a new document to put our stars on. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a 1920 by 1080 just because I don't know that's how I like to do it. And let's go ahead and click and drag this texture in here, all right? And obviously this is not the right size, so I'll just go ahead and scale this down while holding the alt key and scale this up while holding the alt key or the option key if you're on a Mac, and that will just stretch it to fit a little bit better, and let's just rename this to stars. So that works. Okay, so I'll bring up the levels for this with Control L, and I just kinda wanna brighten this up a little bit. So let's just bring those in, and then maybe just move the midtones off to the right just a little bit. And so I just kinda wanted to brighten up those little um, stars and nebulas and such. Okay, so maybe I brightened it up a little too much. So let's just do something a little more like that. Okay, so that just brightens it up just a little bit, and I like that. So I'll hit OK, and then let's go back to our planet, and then with our move tool, just click and drag this up to the tab, 
that we just created and bring it back down and then after a little bit it'll go ahead and paste that into your new document for you but it's taking a little bit for me because of course recording in 1080p isn't exactly an easy task <laughs> okay so once this is in it's probably not going to be the right size so go over here and go to the 3d object scale tool and then if you click and drag downwards you can uh, size that down or if you drag upwards you can uh, size it up of course and then we can go and use our 3d uh, our 3d object pan tool we can put this over here to this little uh, well I mean if you, I'll put this up here so if you, you can see that we got a little bit of a gap in these um, these stars and such so that's pretty much the perfect place to put a planet in my personal opinion you can go ahead and put this wherever the crap you want and we'll just kind of call that good right there um, before I go more into um, uh, messing with the planet I want to make sure I have the size right um, in, in accordance with the brush that I'm using so I'll go ahead and make a new layer and I'll put it into its own group with control G and I'll just call this uh, aura and then go back and select that layer go to our brush tool and I'll right click to bring up our little brush menu right here uh, in the middle of the canvas and then I'll reset the brushes just for now hit OK and then I'll go and load up these Roman abstract brushes and I have the uh, the download link for these um, in the description most definitely we've got the download on our um, on our website I don't know if the download is working for it or not so let me know okay so we'll go ahead and append that instead of hit OK so that way it adds it to our list down here and these are just a crap load of like nebula abstract looking like brushes and such so um, click through those see if you can find something that you like personally I like this one right here so I'll hit enter to get rid of that menu and with white as the foreground color I'll just uh, click that in right around there and of course the size of the planet isn't right so let's go back to our planet uh, let's put this back to a regular brush size it down for later use of course and then we'll go ahead and grab our scale tool for that 3d object and we'll scale it down just a little bit to make sure it looks like it fits a little bit better so maybe somewhere around there is a little bit better so just kinda mess with this until you get something that fits your needs a little bit better depending on the size of your brush and all that and so I'm just gonna size it up just a little bit more okay that's looking pretty good just at it as it is so for the time being we'll go ahead and turn off that aura and then we'll mess with the coloring of this planet to make sure that it fits the surrounding area a little bit better so let's go ahead and give this planet a color overlay and we'll set that to color and then we'll just color pick one of these uh, these shades of like blue out here and actually let's uh, that's pretty good but let's just change this up just a little bit more okay that's looking good enough so we'll hit OK hit OK again and now we want to mess with the shadows of this to make it look like it's a little bit more 3D looking so what we'll do is make a new layer above our planet call it shadow like so and then alt click or command click between those two layers to make that into a clipping mask and then we'll go and grab our elliptical marquee tool and then click and drag from the middle of the planet while holding alt and shift or uh, command and shift if you're on a Mac and make it roughly the same size as the planet it doesn't have to be perfect so once you got that fill it in with black with control backspace assuming you got black as your background color and then deselect that with control D and then we'll just go ahead and move this down into the right just a little bit and since we got that, uh, since we have that as a clipping mask it stays within the bounds of the planet itself which is pretty handy so now we'll go and go to filter blur Gaussian blur and then we'll just blur this enough to where um, just to the point where it looks like it blends a little bit better we don't want to do it too much to where there's no uh, black left on there obviously so um, somewhere around there is looking pretty good so I got what is that 76.5 uh, some odd or no point I don't know I can't even tell from here like I said my contacts are bugging me so I can't see too well <laughs> alright so we'll hit OK and then we'll change the blend mode of that shadow to overlay and then we'll go ahead and duplicate that shadow with control J or command J if you're on a Mac and then alt click between these two layers between uh, to make it into a clipping mask once again 
Now we'll click and drag this shadow copy down into the left just so that it acts as a uh, kind of like a fill in shadow on that uh, uh, lower left hand area. So turn that off, turn that on, you see what I mean. And now we want to go ahead and mess with the levels of this planet even more. So let's go and add a levels adjustment. Make sure it's clipped to these uh, layers down here by alt clicking between the levels and the shadow copy. And we'll go ahead and uh, brighten this up a lot. So something like that is looking pretty good. But uh, we, we want to make this even darker over here. So bring our midtones back over this way. And maybe darken it a little bit more with that. No, maybe not. Okay. Right there is looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and uh, go back to our planets. And we're going to add a few more adjustments to this. So let's go ahead and go to the effects and give it an outer glow right there. And we'll change the blend mode of this to overlay. And then change this color to one of these, um, these bluish green colors out here. Hit OK. And then put up the size on that. And I can't really see it because I chose one of the darker shades. So let's pick a better color right there. Much better. And then we'll kind of do the same thing with an inner glow. Uh, except we'll change that to color dodge. Then change that to one of these uh, brighter colors out here and put up that size a little bit and then maybe put down the opacity and that just kinda acts as like kinda like a fill in on the top there right there alright so we'll hit OK and let's go back and turn on that aura brush and we'll go ahead and change the blend mode of this brush to overlay and then we'll add its own color overlay to that as well change the blend mode of that to color dodge and then let's just choose one of these colors out here uh, let's find a color that looks good Oop, there we go that looks good just right there so that color is 53 dba or no i don't know dbfa there we go and with that we'll hit ok and then let's actually put down the color dodge just a little bit just to help it blend a little bit more so that's actually looking pretty good right there, not too bad. So let's hit OK. And then if you want to intensify this in any way whatsoever, you can go ahead and duplicate that by hitting Control J. And then if you so choose, you can just actually go back to that color overlay and mess with the the settings, like change it to color burn or something like that. Um, just whatever suits your fancy and you think makes it look nice. So um, let's actually put down the fill on that just a little bit just so it's not too overwhelming just kinda helps it uh, brighten it up just a little bit alright so that's looking pretty good um, let's go ahead and make another planet so let's uh, close up that little aura group go to our planet layer and duplicate that with control J or command J if you're on a Mac then instead of uh, dragging the copy up drag the original to the top like so and then with our, let's see, our 3D object pan tool, we'll go ahead and move this off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and scale it down a little bit. And we're just going to get this to the point where it kind of fits in, let's turn this off. So if you can, if you can see it, there's a little bit of a, um, there's a little bit of a arc out here. And I just kind of want to fit that planet in that arc. So let's just grab our pan tool again move it over here and right there is actually pretty good in terms of where it should be so let's just go ahead and redo all the steps that we took earlier so that's looking pretty good on its own um, now we want to go ahead and add in a little bit more um, like bright spots here and there so to do that we'll merge everything into its own layer on the very top layer by hitting control alt shift E or command option shift E if you're on a Mac so that will merge everything into its own layer let's just go ahead and call this merge just for kicks and then go back to your brush tool uh, make sure it's the standard uh, soft uh, round brush make sure your foreground is set to white and the mode on that brush is set to overlay and then just kind of go into areas that you think should have little spotlights and so let's just say like this little crossover right here so we'll give that a click size down the brush a little bit with the left bracket key click size down the brush click size down the brush click 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 now just just that kind of thing right there just that's just a little trick that I came up with so you click size down 
click again, and then just kind of repeat that, da, 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 like that. And so just kind of add in these little spots here and there as you so choose. I kind of like putting them these little uh, these little crosses in the uh, the arcs and all that. And then of course I want to go ahead and emphasize this arc a little bit. So I'll very very carefully uh, go along this arc with my brush all the way around. And I say very carefully because I don't want this to look like sloppy or anything like that. And I can't really see what's going on right here, but whatever, I'll just take a guess at where it would go. And let's see if I can brighten this general area up even more. Because you can't really see what's going on too well. Oops. You can kind of start seeing what's going on here. I don't know, it's a little, little hard to see. But I kind of helped bring it out just a little bit with that overlaid brush. And um, that's actually looking pretty good just as it is. Uh, let's see, anything else I want to do? Maybe go ahead and add in some on the on this little bit of the planet over here to kind of bring out some of those um, some of those arcs and such. And maybe a little bit more up top over here. I don't know, I'm just kind of being a little sloppy with this. I'm not even putting a whole lot of time into it. But as you can see in um, this finished product over here, it actually turned out pretty well. I was a little bit more careful with it. But I don't know, just kind of do what you think looks pretty good. And so I'll just call that good for the time being. If you want to mess with the the arcs a little bit more, um, just to make them stand out a little bit, you can go back to the aura group that we made earlier and click and drag those all the way up to the top like so to brighten that up. Um, but something that I like to do um, when I have these up here is to add a layer mask. And let's uh, go ahead and put this back to normal. And then uh, with a large black brush, I kind of uh, I just mask off this general area out here to get rid of all that. So that way, um, the center area of all the aura is not being uh, intensified, but everything on the out outer areas. So all of these little um, all these little arcs that are kind of uh, trailing off, those get um, intensified, so they kind of um, get brought out a little bit. And so that's just something that I kind of like to do. And just one last little finishing touch that I kind of like to throw in there, like always, is a little bit of a vignette. So make it a new layer, call it Vin for Vignette, and then with the large soft black brush, we'll click and drag around the edge, like so. And then we just set that to overlay. And then we call it good. Because a little before and after there, it helps bring a lot of focus in just on this particular set of planets and all that. So let's uh, zoom in to 100%, hit the letter F, hit the letter F again just to see where we're at. Oops, go back. There we go. All right, so that is what we were able to accomplish in the last like 20 some odd minutes. <laughs> And needless to say, even though I didn't put a whole lot of time and effort into this, it turned out pretty good anyway. So, uh, I hope you guys were able to follow along with this particular tutorial. I'm sorry I went a little fast. I'm a little short on time because, you know, I got my whole bone graft thing that I have to go through in like, um, like a half hour now. So, uh, wish me luck on that, guys. I might not make a tutorial next week because I don't know if I'll be uh, healed up enough to make that, but... Let's, uh, let's hope that I do heal up here pretty fast. And uh, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're an artist in any way whatsoever with Photoshop, please go like us on Facebook because we've got lots of amazing artists on there always contributing new, uh, new ideas and new artwork. And it's been helping me out a lot too. I mean, I would have never come up with this 3D planet thing on my own. So thank you guys. So all the ones out there on our Facebook page that have been inspiring me, you guys are awesome. So, all right, I got to go and get my bone graft. Uh, even the sound of that is kind of irritating. So um, I will go ahead and see you guys another week. We'll see you another time.